Hey, everybody. You're listening to WNRG from our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. We're broadcasting from the U.S. Department of Energy. I'm DJ Paul Lester. It's Hyper Draft Time. We're keeping you energized on your morning commute with some wild and wacky energy stories that you don't want to miss. We'll take a quick pause for station identification and then get right into it. All right, have a podcast about energy. The jewels that these national labs are. In terms of science and scientific capabilities. Big dreams can happen. Keeping our nation safe. Clean energy is way of the future. It's America's economic engine. It's science for the people. This is Direct Current. And we're back. Hey, listeners. Did you know the Energy Department oversees a network of 17 national laboratories? These labs are where some of the world's most important science and technological breakthroughs happen. Up next, a rock star trio of Alice and Matt and Dan try an old-fashioned technique to remember the names of all 17. Take it away! Hey, Dan. Hey, guys. I've been in the lab thinking of important ways to help the American people remember what we do. And I came up with something that I think might be helpful. We have 17 national laboratories. They're very important, but it's very difficult to remember 17 things. Am I right? Right. Like, for instance, let's say you go into the store. You got to write down a grocery list because you can't remember all 17 things you need. You might need, like, eggs, milk, bread, cereal, onions, peas, trees, Tomatoes, potatoes, lambs, rams, hogs, dogs, you name it. You, you need it all. You know? Isn't that a song? No, I don't. It's, it might be a meme. But the point is, how could you remember those unless you either wrote them down or maybe you could create some sort of mental uh, device to remember it? Oh, like a mnemonic? Yeah. Do you remember those from like middle school? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally for the table of operations in math. Every good boy does fine for piano. Right, like when Pluto was still a planet, the solar system went something like, my very easy method just speeds up naming planets. Or my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas. No, that's better. You know, it would be super helpful if we had one of those for the National Labs. Yes, I know you guys know this, but for our listeners, the Department of Energy's 17 National Labs are powerhouses of science and technology. They're home to some of the world's most powerful lasers, super fast supercomputers, and really bright minds. But no one knows all their names. So let's list all 17 labs so that you know what they are. And we're going to list them in order of their creation date. National Energy Technology Laboratory, or NETL. Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, or Berkeley Lab. Los Alamos National Laboratory. Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Argonne National Laboratory. Ames National Laboratory. Brookhaven National Laboratory. Sandia National Laboratories. Idaho National Laboratory. Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, or PPPL. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, or Livermore Lab. Savannah River National Laboratory. Slack National Accelerator Laboratory, or simply Slack. Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, or PNNL. Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, or Fermilab. National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL. Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facility, or Jefferson Lab. So those initials are N B. L-O-A-A-B-S-I-P-L-S-S-P-F-N-J. Are you still with me? (laughs) Easy. Yeah, easy, right? I had people in the office create a mnemonic device using those initials that I just spoke out and create little sentences or collections of sentences that maybe would help you remember. So let's try one out. You guys ready? Ready. Mm -hmm. Matt and Allison have never heard these. I just want to be clear about that because I feel like we should say that. Let's start with a, uh, a bicycle race themed mnemonic device. Matt is a big bike rider. Yeah, I can't wait. Nine bikes lap over and a Brooks saddle initiates petty leg slaps. <laughs> Sid's penny farthing never jostles. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> you know, like a penny farthing is that big bike with the big wheel? I, did, I didn't know that, you didn't actually. Know that. No, I did well, not. Okay, this, this next one. Is is one I'm pretty proud of. It's about animal hair. All right. Okay. All right. I'm nervous. Okay. Never buy legions of alopecia alpacas. Buy shaggy Indian pronghorns. Long, shimmering, shavable pigtails, forever <laughs> netted in Jersey. <laughs> uh, 
That's really something. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. So that, one's a, that one's a maybe. We'll call that one a maybe. I'm marking that down. Okay, this one's from Paul, and it's Harry Potter themed. Shout out to Paul Lester. Nothing but love of absolutely awesome butterbeer. Sometimes I prefer Luna's strawberry shake, particularly for new jinxes. Uh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this one is Lord of the Rings themed, so we're just staying literary for a second here. Now before Legolas offered Aragorn another basic sword, Isildur's phantom landed. Saruman saw punching Frodo's neck, comma, jaw. <laughs> uh, the comma is in brackets there. I was going to say, you can kind of tell uh, Paul was in a newsroom at some point. That sounds very much like a headline. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> okay, this one comes from Court, and it's a, a Manhattan Project-themed one. Niels Bohr looks over at the atomic bomb, says, I particularly like your stable stream. Please forget that nuclear joke. <laughs> Wow. That's really well good. Done, yeah, Court. it's a good one. That might be my favorite. Yeah. That I one like is, that one. It's pretty really good. nailed it there. Yeah. This one is baseball themed from Simon. Shout out to Simon. Our, he's standing next to me. What up? What up, Simon? <laughs> no. Boys lose on an aggressive baseball strategy. Instead, play lefty's side so pitchers find new joy. <laughs> Okay, so if you're a sports fan, that's going to be extra. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's, that's the one for our uh, our ESPN base. Yeah, we'll we'll put that one in as in the maybe category, <laughs> solid maybe. Uh, this one comes from Dan, which is me. Uh, it's Garfield themed. I don't know if you guys watched Garfield growing up. Not just ride the cartoon, but no, there's also I, the show. Yeah, the you show. Garfield, Garfield, and Garfield, and Garfield and Friends. Garfield and Friends. Exactly. Yeah. It's very deep, very deep cut here. <laughs> oh goody! I hope there's lasagna. No, no lasagna, unfortunately. The, whatever. Nermal balanced, leaping off the armoire. Arbuckle! <laughs> Balled the short hair, irate. Purring loudly, scratching sounds pathetically floundered nearby John. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's good. I, didn't, I didn't expect Nermal to be the star of the show. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All these de- demonstrate a real in depth knowledge of the subject. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. really impressive. Okay, here's one from Ernie. Naturally bald lawyers offer apples always, but sometimes intelligent people like super sweet peach fruit and nut jam. <laughs> nut jam. Mm. <laughs> nut Delicious. Jam. Oh, okay. So guys, you've I heard. Say, I don't know. You've if heard I can, all of them. Uh, we'll Do you see. have any uh, favorites? I think the alopecia alpacas really, you know, well, really spoke to me. Never buy legions of alopecia alpacas. Buy shaggy Indian pronghorns. Long, shimmering, shavable pigtails, forever netted in Jersey. Yeah. Okay, so what is it then? So never buy, never nettle Brookhaven, legions of alopecia alpacas, uh, Livermore, Argon, Ames, buy shaggy Indian pronghorns. Uh, what's the other? Well, you missed theme? of, which is that was the of. The of is part it. of it oh, on dear. this one. Yeah. Oh dear. That's Oak Ridge. That's Oak Ridge. Okay. Yeah. We should probably capitalize the O. Yeah. Well, it, you can't say capitalization on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did I leave off? Okay. Alopecia, alpacas, Ames, Argon, by shaggy Indian pronghorns. Oh God, what's the other B now? That's the California. Oh, Berkeley. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sandia, Idaho, uh, let's go Princeton for that, that P. Long, shimmering, shavable pigtails. Oh, let's Alabama. Well, once you, once you memorize. Yeah. yeah. Savannah River, yeah. Slack. Yeah. Pacific Northwest, yeah. Forever Netted, Fermilab, NREL, and J- JLab. Yeah. Woo! Well done. I want to see if I can remember one of the mnemonics. Okay, let's see if you can. By heart. Let's Let's see see what you got, Allison. Niels Bohr looked over at Atomic Bomb saying, I particularly like your solid stream. Stable stream. Good enough. Please forget this nuclear joke. Yeah. (laughs) Bravo. Yeah, those are those are fantastic. Yeah, good job, team. But I think uh, our <laughs> listeners can probably come up with some even better ones. So if you have an idea, send it to us. All right. Wow, that was interesting. Well, up next on Hyperdrive Time, we're going to switch gears for something a bit quieter. It's a cool new energy technology that will rock your world. Check it out. Hey, Simon, can I tell you something? 
I didn't even start the story yet. I know, I know. I'm excited about it, but I have to whisper it, though. You're excited, but you have to whisper? Why? Because I've been practicing my ASMR technique. What's that? ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. It's kind of hard to explain to people that don't experience it, but it's often described as a relaxing tingling in the scalp and the back of the neck and can extend to the rest of the body. It's caused by certain sounds like whispering, tapping, that sort of thing. Anyway, there's lots of really popular YouTube videos and podcasts these days that cater to people who experience this sensation. So we thought we'd give it a shot, but we wanted it to be educational. But what's something really relaxing that we can tell people about? How about SMRs? Small modular reactors? Wait, wait a second. Are you saying we should do an ASMR SMR seminar? (laughs) That's exactly what I'm saying. Listen carefully. I recommend headphones if you're not already listening with them. Hold on a second. Before you do your thing, let me just explain what a small modular reactor is. A small modular reactor, also known as an SMR, will be a nuclear power plant that is smaller in size than the current generation of nuclear plants. These smaller, compact designs will be factory fabricated reactors that can be transported by truck or rail to a nuclear power site. Now that we have that, take it away. Well, you had your headphones turned up. Now it's time to turn them back down. Our final stop on Hyperdraft Time takes us to everyone's favorite segment, Quartz Quarks Corner. Okay, kids. Who's ready to learn about some particle physics? Okay, that's enough. Welcome to Quartz Quarks Corner. I'm Court. What is the world made of? What does it really matter? So the world's made of quarks. Most of it anyway, including this corner. Quarks are what we call some elementary particles, which is physics speak for really, really small. They combine to form bigger particles called hadrons, which are things you've actually heard about, like protons and neutrons. You have heard of them, right? They make up the nucleus of an atom. Hmm. Never mind. Anyway, each proton and neutron is made up of three quarks. I guess I should point out that we never see one of them by themselves. They're the popular kids with the good hair. They're always found in pairs or hanging out with other quarks. Sounds pretty terrible if you ask me. There are six types of quarks, which are called flavors, because this is the wackiest part of the wacky world of particle physics. The flavors are named up, down, strange, charm, top, and bottom. It's just what they're called. Up and down have the lowest mass, and they're the most stable and common. Strange, charm, top, and bottom are only produced through high-energy collisions, like with cosmic rays and particle accelerators. Here's the fun part, so get ready for the fun part. For every flavor of quark, there's an evil version called an anti-quark. 
I'm saying it's evil because it's a fun and lighthearted way to think about it. But the actual moral alignment of the quark is undetermined at this time. They wear mustaches, so you know they're anti-quarks. They don't do that either. That was another joke. All you math whizzes out there, that was two jokes. Besides the mustache, anti-quarks are basically identical, except some of the properties have an equal magnitude but opposite sign. Now, because of science, quarks have to be mapped. Like the periodic table of elements, particle physics has its own fancy map called the standard model. You can go look it up if you want. It looks like a knockoff Pokeball. You kids even play Pokeball anymore? There's a bunch of other particles on there in addition to quarks, which I'm not going to get into right now, except to say that the most elusive particle, the Higgs boson, was discovered in 2012 after about 40 years of looking for it. You might have heard about that too. It happened at the Large Hadron Collider, the huge underground experimental facility below the French-Swiss border. Anyone? Joke number three. Get ready to laugh. Higgs boson walks into a church and the priest says, I'm sorry, we don't allow Higgs bosons to come into churches. And the Higgs says, without me, you can't have mass. <laughs> That's from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, Neil. Cute. Well, finding the Higgs particle was finding the missing piece of the standard model puzzle. So special, they put it right in the middle. So that's it. We're all done, right? No more mysteries anymore. Great. Mm, Court, you're not actually done yet. <sighs> the standard model. Very powerful. Doesn't explain everything. Like, it doesn't explain why the universe is composed of matter and not antimatter. Doesn't explain why gravity is so weak compared to the other forces. There's even a batch of questions the current model can't answer, such as, what is dark matter? Why is the universe accelerating? How tall is Jake Gyllenhaal? There's so many unknowns that go around for everyone. Oh, and you know those 17 national labs everyone was trying to remember earlier and failing at it? That's not a mystery at all. A bunch of them do really important particle physics research too. I'm not going to tell you which ones, though. You should go on energy.gov and find out for yourself. Now I am done talking about quarks. Tune in next time when we find out why quarks are strange and charming. Like me. Aww. And that's it for Direct Current's Hopper Drive Time. But first, we want to hear from you, loyal listeners. The digital lines are open. To all you word wizards out there, send your labs mnemonic to directcurrent at hq.doe.gov or tweet at energy. Thank you to Seth Larson of the Nuclear Energy Office, Shannon Brescher Shea from the Office of Science, and a fond farewell and a heartfelt thank you to our resident shock jock, Dan Wood. And thank you, Taylor Gray at Transition Music and these fine folks at the Energy Public Affairs Team. This is Bob House. Deborah Atkinson Hyman. Jess Szymanski. Lindsay Geisler. Kayla Hensley. Vernon Heron. Alexandra Bass. Courtney Creer. Ernie Ambrose. Sarah Marie Kenny. Bianca Katanis. Shailen Hines. Direct Current is produced by Matt Dozier, Simon Edelman, and Allison Lantero. Art and design by Court Creer, with support from Ernie Ambrose and Antique Warish. Direct Current is coming at you from our nation's capital. We're broadcasting from the U.S. Department of Energy here in beautiful Washington, D.C. This is Paul Lester from WNRG signing off for Direct Current. Goodbye, everybody. Until next time.